Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. We got the hat on backwards right now just because how the sun is when I had my hat on. You couldn't see my face at all and it just seemed, seemed weird to me. So as you could have guessed from the thumbnail and the title of the video, probably this video is going to be about my GTR. Uh, AKA probably the worst financial decision to date of my life, but it is what it is. And yeah, that's, that's basically that. So we're going to talk about the GTR. Uh, this, I'm not turning into like a GTR channel or anything like that. I, it's almost stereotypical for like a YouTuber to get a GTR. I, I hate that aspect of it, but it's been my dream car. So I'm going to talk about it for a bit but before you guys unsubscribe you know people that follow me for normal stuff don't worry like really my, my passion what i like spending time doing is this this kind of stuff preparedness building out the homestead overlanding trucks that kind of stuff obviously right got the trucks the trucks actually the the van i really like i really like the sprinter as well but i've i've always liked cars as well so for those of you that I don't know, I guess your subscribers are into the channel at all. I'm gonna just talk for a little while, give some backstory on cars and stuff in case you're in case you're interested. And I'll put timestamps chapters down below. So if you don't care about me or the the past of of myself, then skip ahead and I'll just get into like talking about the car, some of the modifications to it, and yeah, that kind of stuff. So we'll just start. We'll start at the beginning. So I was born, no, uh, so, as with most, most guys, I've been into cars forever, you know, since I was a little kid and played with Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars and 124th die cast scales and models and RC cars and everything. And really since I was a kid, I liked trucks and SUVs. I remember my favorite, my favorite uh, was this, this forest green two-door Ford Explorer when I was a kid. That was like my favorite of my little cars. And I, I don't know, I've never even owned an Explorer, so I kind of faded off. But I've never really been one of those guys that have had like a Lamborghini poster on my my dorm room wall. And was like, oh, one day I'm going to own that. I didn't really care too much. But I have always liked cars. And I remember the GTR specifically, the R35 GTR back in 2009. I'm, old, I'm an older guy than most of you think. 2009 was my last year of college. I delivered pizza all through co college and always loved cars and had multiple cars in college. I'll get to that in a bit maybe, but I delivered to the first GTR I've ever, I ever saw, you know, in America, like in person. I delivered pizza, older guy, probably in his 50s or so. Had the GTR and, you know, it was in the driveway, so I pulled up, and I think he saw me like checking it out as I was walking in. So then he's like, "Oh, you want to check it out? I just got it. You want to sit in it?" And he's like super amped to show me it and talk about it and tell me all the specs and everything. And from that day, I've just always, always loved the R35 GTR. Now, do I like older GTRs? The R34s, 33s, 32s? Yeah, they are, but I'm not one of those guys. It's like, oh, my dream has been a might been a right-hand drive R34. No, I've like always, for as long as I can remember, this has been the one car that kind of was my dream car, my grail car. Like I don't really care to own Ferrari or McLaren or Lambo or Bugatti or any of that kind of stuff. I, this was probably the most expensive, craziest car that I've ever truly wanted in my life. That and an Audi RS6. I really like Audi RS6s, but that was like, a, that's a more, that's a more recent car crush. But long time, we'll just talk. I'll talk and show you this a little bit. So uh, I've had Subarus and I've had turbo cars and I've had uh, what Mazda RX-8 was my, probably my nicest car I bought in college. And the first new car that I ever bought when I got a real job was a Volkswagen GTI. More recently, actually, you saw on the channel, I had a, a 2004, I believe, Subaru Forester FXT. 
so it's basically a an STI kind of in a Forester body. Basically had the bigger STI motor with the smaller WRX turbo. I stage two'd that car, uh, so full turbo back and intake and tune. And that car is pretty fast and pretty fun, but not refined at all. Kind of a kind of a beater car. And then I sold it as well. I got an Audi A4 for a bit. This is recently, like I had the A4 right before I had the Lexus LX570. And I usually shop Craigslist, I shop Craigslist all the time. So I find really good deals on cars. So those cars were really good deals and I sold them usually for, for a profit. So I've always kind of made money buying and selling cars for as long as I can remember. But I have some staples, obviously, vehicles that uh, I keep around for a longer time. Actually, I've had this for a year now. Can you believe it? The Sequoia I've had for one year. I want to do a one year update because I love, <laughs> I love that thing. Do I wish it was like a hundred series or 200 series Land Cruiser? Yeah, but something about the beater factor of the Sequoia, I absolutely love, love, love that. But I have just always had a lust affair with fast cars and trucks for as long as I can remember my first my first car was actually a Jeep Wrangler, and then it was a Nissan Frontier, and then I had, you know, bounced around to Imprezas, Suzuki Samurais, Land Rovers, and kind of the fast cars that I've been talking about. So I've always been, I've always been kind of a car guy, but you know, never could afford what I would consider maybe a dream car. So this is my first dream car purchase of my life at the ripe old age of 37. So I'm not like a 22 year old that's buying uh, one of my dream cars. I, I didn't sacrifice a lot of other things in my life to get a dream car. I'm building the life that I wanna have and just was fortunate enough to also be able to incorporate this car. Uh, I almost didn't wanna make this video because I didn't want it to come off as a, as a brag. Like I have a lot of vehicles and finally I actually have a what I would consider a nice, like, you know, this was an expensive vehicle, super expensive for me. So don't want it to come off in that way, but this car will probably show up more on Instagram than it will on YouTube for all the reasons I kind of mentioned earlier. I'm just not really in that realm. Maybe if I get some friends in the Denver area that are into filming and want to follow around and we take this out and we make cool, like cinematic videos of the car suite, but I don't have those friends right now. So this is probably just gonna photos of it and stuff show up on on Instagram. Talon, you guys know, uh, YouTube friend, real life, you know, actually really close, real life friend of mine as well, but you guys know him as my, my YouTube friend, Talon, recently bought a Supra. It is crazy. I live on this like random mountain road. This, this street feeds, I don't know, I think like 20 houses, but it feels like a freaking highway. Anytime I film, like normally, almost never see cars, but every time I turn on a camera, it's like I live on a highway over here. I'm so ready to be at my new place, which is off, off the road and I can just film and not have to be like, pause every time a car drives by. Well, hate it. Anyway, what was I talking about? Talon, Talon friend of mine, obviously, uh, he bought a Supra. If you haven't seen it, check out his channel. And him and I, you know, we've been talking about fast cars for forever. He's had plenty of fast cars in the past. I've had plenty of fast cars. He was talking to getting a, a BRZ for a while. Uh, no, not a BRZ, a GR86, the Toyota's version of it. I think he talked about that. Hopefully that's public knowledge. And then he got the, the Supra. I wanted to get a Golf R. I've talked about that on the channel as well. I love Golf R. It makes a great daily driver vehicle, but then Talon got a Supra and so I needed something faster, right? No, but I, when I was thinking about the, the Golf R, which I still think is a great daily, I wouldn't daily it still, just like I'm not gonna daily this. I, I like to daily a truck or I like to at least daily an SUV for all of the reasons I talk about in a video called the prepared daily driver. I like a vehicle that can go places in a pinch and I, I just this is this is my life usually living in the mountains of Colorado this is my life usually this 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 you know this is my life so it's not it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me to try to daily a GTR or even a Golf R so 
Also, I wanted an MK8 Golf R, and the price of those, I can't get one for like a year. And even when I get one, there's like a 10, 20K markup on those things. And so that kind of soured me to that. I was looking at the, I really like the new Z, though it was, you know, people thought it was going to be the 400Z, but it's just called the Z. But the new Z, I like that car a lot. But I wanted all wheel drive. We got all wheel drive. And I wanted in a pinch to be able to throw the kiddos in the back seat. Actually, a rear facing car seat, even a Nuna, not like a tiny car seat, rear facing car seat fits in the GTR. Is it a practical family car? No, not at all. But it does have a big trunk, can fit four people, assuming the, the back two people are pretty small. And yeah, again, where I live, all wheel drive makes sense, like making it up my driveway, even kind of all-wheel drive helps out. So the things I needed, which is why I was looking for a Golf R, all-wheel drive, fast, can seat for, can fit a cart seat in the back and a stroller in the trunk. And the GTR actually, surprisingly, well, maybe a lot of you guys know it, but the GTR checks all of those boxes and happened to be my dream car. So that's kind of how, how I arrived at this GTR moment. Um, that's kind of, I guess, I don't know, the backstory of why I own a GTR. But I guess it doesn't really answer the question of why I own a GTR, because why I didn't need it. Uh, and it really <laughs> ultimately came down to Ashley. So I'm going to blame Ashley for this one. So I've, I've, you know, I've been with Ashley for six years, been married for the last year. Actually, yesterday was our one-year anniversary. Congrats, one year. It's been it's been, if we made it through this first year, we'll make it through anything, right? We, we had, had a baby. I've been building this house, been working all, all the time and have honestly not been physically present as much as I would like to just because I'm trying to bang this house out, which house update, I think this is the last week and I'll be pretty much done. Like, you know, there'll be a lot of little things to do, but I'm shooting for uh certificate of occupancy in about a week or two and then we're moving moving saying goodbye to this house in this driveway that had filmed so many videos in and moving to the new house but ashley so i you know i i obviously buy a lot of other off-road truck vehicles and you know sell them and buy them and whatever but i've as long as ashley has known me and obviously the stories i told you before as long as i've been driving. I've loved fast cars. So I've always talked to Ashley about fast cars, talked to her about the Golf Arc, talked to her about the, hi, Ashley's up there looking at me from the deck. I talked to her about the Audi RS6, which uh, was, you know, too expensive. It's like a dream. Probably Audi RS6. I don't know. Maybe, I think the GTR is still more of a dream car than the Audi RS6, and I've certainly wanted and drooled over the GTR for, for a lot longer than the RS6. The RS6 is like within the last two years I've really wanted it. But I've talked to her about those cars, and I was getting really close to buying a Golf R, like putting a deposit on one and getting it ordered. And Ashley, didn't, Ashley doesn't know too much about cars, so I, sh we sh I saw a Golf R on the road, and I was like, that is the car. That's the car I want to get. Do you like it? And Ashley's like, no. <laughs> like, I I think it looks, I think it looks lame. It just looks like a regular car. Like that's the car that you've been like wanting to get. Like that's the car you would get if you could get any car. And I told her, no, no, no. If I could get any car, it would be a GTR, a Nissan GTR. And so she was like, then why are you getting a, why are you trying to get a Golf R if you actually, if you really want the GTR? And I was like, well, the GTR doesn't really make any financial sense. I'm a grown, I'm a grown man now. I'm, I'm trying to be practical and make financial sense where I can. You know, that doesn't always work out that way. But she was like, you should just do it. And, and so it was Ashley's fault. Ash, Ashley made me. Ashley made me do it. So then I, I don't have this thing called patience. So obviously not many people are tracking GTR prices unless you're like looking for a GTR, but GTR prices are stupid right now. Getting a new GTR, they're going 15, 20K markup. 
and six, six months to a year out, which would put you at the newer model, the 2024 model probably, which I don't like as much. And this is a 2017, which was the, the facelift and they updated a bunch of stuff. This is my favorite of the R35 GTRs, this body style. So uh, if I was gonna get a new one, I'd be looking at 15, 20K over, over asking price and then waiting, waiting for a while. So I got a used one, this is a 2017 uh, you can get 2009s, you know, they, they started in 2009, you get 2009s and up for a lot cheaper than the 2017s. The 2017s kind of have a little premium because they're like the newer, the newer design, but GTRs across the board are probably 20K more than they were two or three years ago. Like this car, if I bought it two years ago, probably, yeah, I mean, I would have paid 10 to 20K less than I did now. So they've been appreciating in value, like a lot of used cars, but this is kind of a car that I think, I think it'll kind of be a timeless classic, so to speak. So, uh, uh, Ashley made me do it. I'll just say that, Ashley, made, Ashley and Talon made me do it. And then one more thing that kind of sealed the deal, I have another friend, uh, college buddy Brad, you've seen him on the channel, he also has a, a cement built uh, Toyota Tacoma. So I was talking to him, you know, we've, we've been into cars forever and he, you know, we've, why I'm actually in the new house, one of the first things I'm gonna do with my friends is come over and have a fast and furious party and try to get my other friends to buy sports cars too, but most of them are lame and they won't do it. But Brad, my man Brad, <laughs> the, the second I mentioned I was shopping for sports cars and maybe a GTR, he was like, dude, I've been wanting to get an STI. And he went out like the next day and bought an STI, like an idiot, Brad. Mm. But I'm an idiot too. So. Basically, Talon got the Supra. I got a buddy, Jason. He's got a Porsche, actually. Brad got an STI. Ashley told me to get the GTR. And then a week later, I flew down to San Antonio where I bought this car and drove it back straight. Just drove this, flew to San Antonio. I left my house here at like 4 a.m., hopped on a flight, San Antonio, met the guy, test drove it, perfect, only has 6,500 miles on it. It's, it's silver, which isn't my favorite color, but it checked a lot of other boxes and gave him a check, cashier's check and drove, drove it home 15 hours from San Antonio and got home, I mean, drove, I drove the speed limit totally, but got home about one, I think one or 2 a.m. So in a less than 24 hour period, flew down to San Antonio, grabbed this and drove it back. I, I didn't want to spread it out to a joy ride because I'm building the house and I'm just spending every waking second over there. So that's the story of the GTR. And I added some of my own flavor to it, but it was, it was actually about exactly what I would have wanted to do to it. So low mileage, like I said, 6,500 miles. But now it's up in the high seven since I had to drive it from San Antonio and haven't driven it a whole lot just because I haven't really had time for it. But I did wrap it, but let's talk about what this car came with uh, from the guy that I bought it from. He's a real car guy, you know, seems like very, very well taken care of. And all these mods were put on very recently. He bought this from a collector. So for the first handful of years, it only got like a thousand miles put on it. And then he didn't drive it much, obviously. So ultra low mileage. And it had what's called in, in the GTR world, in, in other cars that I've, I've modified, this would be like a stage two, stage two plus because it's got intake, it's got full turbo back exhaust, it's actually catless full turbo back, it's got injectors and then it's got a tune. In the GTR world, all of that comes together uh, to be called, I believe this is a stage 4.25 GTR. So it's making 640 or 650 horsepower to the wheels and it does have E85 tune as well, but you can, you can drive it on anything. And the, the neat thing is that it actually auto detects your octane levels and you don't have to change anything. So I fill it up with premium, the tune adjusts to premium. I fill it up with E85. It bumps those figures up and it's got just great stuff. It's got full boost logic, sounds, crazy, looks amazing. And then since then I wrapped it multicam black, obviously got the, got the Tacoma out here. So I wanted matchy matchy. I've wrapped a few vehicles. The Freedom Tremor was multicam black as well. Uh, my friends there at 
Multicam. I love those guys and Cry Precision. Speaking of, I, I meant to talk about it earlier. I'm wearing my, basically, it's basically a Multicam black flannel. So, I don't know, I don't know you can tell. Light's, light's kind of weird. Maybe it's better, better on this side. Can you tell? So these are the flannels I designed. In case you missed the video, I designed a flannel. Vertex is selling it. It's called the Last Line Flannel. This is one of the colors. All the colors are sweet. I made a whole video on that, but get one. People are, are loving them. From my video, I didn't talk about it, but most people are surprised that it's like, like it's substantial. It's a substantial flannel. It's got some heft to it. So I didn't talk about that in the flannel video, but if you were on the fence and you're like, I just don't need a light, it's, it's got some heft to it. Anyway, I decided to wear the matching flannel. So yeah, full uh, multicam wrap. So this is a 3M ultra matte wrap. This was installed by my boy, Jake at Lucid Wraps. Crushed this thing as is usually the case with the vehicles. I kind of had a vision. I had a vision in my mind that he brought to life. So multicam black wrap and then the brake calipers are kind of this copper color wheels are bronze i'll talk about all the specs here in a bit copper color and i was like that's a cool little accent so let's add some copper accents to it so you'll see through here i got some kind of like copper fangs the little v these the rear view or the side view mirrors got a little stripe we did a little cool Kind of almost Tron-like thing with the handles. And then we got a little bit back here. And I really think you do, you do a wrap like Multicam Black and you need some accents. Like the Tacoma has so many little things and mods and lights and suspension and all this stuff. It looks good, like roof rack. But if you were just to wrap a car, even if it's like a supercar kind of car, especially if you were gonna go like black wheels, it would just look, I don't know, it wouldn't it wouldn't look that cool, I don't think. So we added some some tasteful accents. And then instead of black wheels, you know, I love black wheels on a lot of things, but I love bronze wheels as well. Maybe even gold wheels would be sweet on these. But I was looking for wheels and I kind of wanted that that classic five spoke type look. So these are Titan 7 TC5s up in here and forged uh, crazy processes that they use for these wheels. And the cool, the thing I like about them, rather than researching like what offsets and widths and everything, they actually just have wheels dialed in for certain vehicles. So you get these wheels, you say, I want them for a GTR and they put them, they have the perfect, I don't know if you can tell, but the perfect offset. Uh, factory wheels, you know, are in some, and then I don't want wheels on my car that are sticking out like, like on my trucks. So this is the perfect, I mean, I can't say enough good things. Perfect offset here on these. Uh, five spokes, bronze, beautiful. These are actually factory size. So these are 20 inch wheels, 20s on the front and the rear, but we have a 12 inch wide in the rear, 10 inch wide in the front. I wrapped those in Toyo R888. R's. These are these are race tires, actually, because again, this isn't going to be my daily. I may do something fun, you know, get an extra set of wheels and tires and throw some snow tires on this thing because it is all wheel drive. It's an all wheel drive ripper, but it's going to be a fair weather car for me. So I just opted for the Proxizar 88R by Toyo. And these are 285 35R20s in the front and Fat, fat in the rear. 325 30R20s. These things, see if we can tell here. I don't know if you can tell, you know, won't be able to tell as much on camera, but these tires are wide, you know, looks like a race car. Ultimate dry performance. Not a tire that I hear is going to be very good in the in the rain and definitely not in the snow. So these are a, 
a summer performance racing tire basically but the coolest absolutely the coolest looking tire that anyone makes and plans for the vehicle are i'm i'm an older you know i'm not an old guy obviously i don't want to offend guys <laughs> that are that are older than me by calling myself old but i'm not a little kid I have a family. I'm not doing stupid stuff on the road. I'm a law-abiding citizen, so I'm not doing anything crazy on, on public roads with this, but I will definitely be doing some spirited mountain driving. I live in the an amazing place to drive sports cars on windy mountain roads. In, in Colorado, there's a ton of great driving, obviously a ton of great camping, which is why my, my one love really, but and some amazing mountain roads. So I'm talking to my friends about, you know, we take a trip up to Aspen or whatever and just drive some, some windy mountain roads and just have a blast. But I would also like to track this thing. I would also maybe like to get in some autocross. I don't know, you know, the car's kind of too nice to, for me anyway, to want to trash like that. But once in a while, I think I do want to just push this car a little harder. So that's kind of why I got some of that stuff. The interesting thing about these, you know, if you don't know too much about GTRs, these are hand built. I believe there's only like four mechanics in the Nissan factory that mine was, you know, whatever that guy's name is. Thanks for building the motor. But there's only four guys that build these motors and they get their name placard on the motors. And really, I mean, beautiful. So this is Twin turbo V6, that's a twin turbo V6 as well. This is a little bit faster, it's a little bit faster. So we got, um, the the only thing aftermarket are these bad boys, the intakes, you know, there's it's twin turbo, so dual intakes on this, and injectors and then exhaust. So this is pretty, pretty much a factory looking engine bay. I do have, you guys ask about these on a lot of my vehicles since I don't drive them for, potentially longer periods of time. I have a uh, little NOCO, NOCO leads on a lot of my vehicles to just kind of keep them on trickle chargers and stuff when I'm not driving them. But that's basically it. We do have carbon fiber composite up in here too, but man, what a beautiful engine. Premium midship, and then we do got these, I forget what they're called, you know, I'm not a, not a car reviewer guy, but these hood vents basically are functional in there. We do have some non-functional grills, but then we do have some functional vents as well. And so it actually had a full paint protection film on the bumper, fenders, and hoods. So I just had Jake wrap over all that stuff. I did swap the ambers out for these, which actually are very bright amber still. I want to be seen, but those were a cool little update. I swapped out all the interior lights to LEDs, and other than that, I haven't done a whole lot. I did add weather techs. And one of the things that's pretty cool about the GTR, it has a massive trunk. Now the opening isn't super big, but you can get a set of golf clubs in here or whatever. But look at all this room. We got the matching multicam black Vertex Ready Pack. Obviously a few other random things in here and plenty of room for strollers and bags or whatever. It's a GTR, so it's you know, kind of a touring car at its heart and you know very fast off the line, but very good for windy roads. Hurt held the did the Nürburgring super fast back in its heyday. These things came out, you know, in 2009 and they're just crushing, crushing supercars and hypercars and just like insane amounts of power and speed. Everyone at the time I remember was talking about like, it breaks every law of physics because it's kind of a heavy car and it's, you know, twin turbo V6 and nothing too crazy, like too, too crazy in the power department, but just spanking everything out there. Now it's a pretty dated, platform they have been making kind of continuous improvements and they get better and better and more refined and a little bit faster these things do uh quarter miles in the tens and and zero to sixties and under three this is i haven't i haven't done it myself but making at least i don't know i, I think probably 150 ish maybe 100 or 150 ish more horsepower than stock so this thing is quite 
fast, by far the fastest car I've ever owned. And the inside's pretty, pretty nice. It's nothing, nothing too crazy in here, honestly, but did do weather techs, obviously. I'm a dirty boy. And then got the tiny back seats I was talking about before. I think pretty unusable for adults. Obviously, if the seat is back, there is virtually no leg room at all. But if you push this seat forward, uh, I did fit our rear facing car seat in the back. So it's actually technically is, is doable back there, um, but not really gonna be doing that too often. You got some stuff like carbon fiber up in here. There's actually carbon fiber kind of in a lot of places and it looks pretty good. My friend, uh, Brad, who got the newer, has a, the last model year that they made the STI anyway. With an interior that's probably nicer than this, he likes this interior way more than his. So we got it saying my tire pressure is low up here, but we have the famous dash. I don't know, people always talk about this dash. I, the exhaust note is pretty loud, even in the cabin. But these are all customizable. You can change out what you wanna see. You can change all the gauges and the dials. This was famously designed by the same designers of Gran Turismo. So it's cool, you can see all this stuff and kind of customize and, and program it differently. But that's the interior. Pretty, pretty standard stuff, honestly. As is the case in my vehicles, I should add a med kit to this. I haven't really like loaded it out, but got some pepper spray handy. Always carry a gun as well. But my motto kind of is sometimes a gun isn't the answer and sometimes pepper spray is the answer. So I always keep some of that handy. We've got little pouches, but not, I mean, you know, again, this is not a car that I personally would want a daily just cause it's not not prepared. It's not a prepared daily driver, but pretty nice cockpit. And then it's got like kind of carbon fiber rear diffuser. These Boost Logic titanium exhausts, they're just works of art. You know, it's kind of hard to see up in here at it all with the camera, but man, they are beautiful. Sound so good. And then you obviously got a lot of lower arrow underneath these cars to reduce drag and everything. They didn't even remove the little uh, protector, like the little blue protector things from it. <laughs> I took it off on the driver's side, but forgot. I didn't take it off over here. These little side guys were silver. I plasti dipped those. Uh, but other than that, kind of did things right on this car for the most part. And it's just, an absolutely legendary combo with the multicam black Tacoma. So plans for the car, uh, I don't know, probably not gonna do much to it right now. It's pushed about as far as it can go without swapping. Next step kind of uh, progression of power is you swap to bigger turbos. It's kind of the next relatively minor update and then you can get up to pushing like eight nine hundred horsepower with that i i don't think i'm gonna go to that and i don't think i would ever go beyond that but yeah i don't you know i don't i don't know the car is already scary fast and i won't really say scary fast because it's not that scary in the driver's seat because it's so that's the thing about gtrs that you'll hear they're so planted and so in control that it's just makes everyone a good driver so to speak so it's not too scary in the driver's seat, but in the passenger seat, it is kind of scary. When I went and test drove it, this does have the ECU tech tune on it. So you can do a roll. I've never had a car with basically rolling uh, launch, rolling launch, anti-lag boost dealio. So you can basically set a speed, smash the gas pedal and then hit cancel on the cruise control and it spools the turbos up, creates boost and just launches you insanely. And you can do it from 40, 60, whatever. Uh, and it does have paddle shifters so you can dial some of that in. It's an auto, they only come in auto, you know, but kind of a lot of the really fast cars do only come in auto. When he did that, like he, we, we test drove it and he was like showing me some of the features. 
any demo that he's like never like launched this from the star it's really hard on the transmission yada 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 but the rolling launch i have done and the rolling launch is in insane almost more impressive than a, a regular launch so will i do anything more to this i have no reason to i'm not going to be out cruising the streets of denver trying to to race people or join the underground racing circuit or really do anything. It's already the it's already faster than all of my friends' fast cars, which I kind of feel kind of feel bad about <laughs> having the fastest car. So I don't think I'll make it any more faster, um, unless I don't see myself getting into like actually trying to race it or anything like that. So it'll probably stay for the most part what it is, which is already more car than I could ever have wanted. For the rest of my life it's you know kind of a dream come true in a lot of senses but again i don't want this to be some motivational you could achieve your dreams too or look at me and my no nah, like who cares about that stuff but at the same time you know stoked it's like i've said multiple times in this video it's probably the only car that i would put into the it was my dream car category and now i've had it now i've checked off all the boxes now i can just be a hermit at home and hang out with my family and grow fruit trees and hang out with my chickens. It's good. Back to the good life now that all of my goals were accomplished. Not really. It is, I mean, the, the sweetest, the sweetest car. I'm the kind of guy that if there was a, a Lambo and a Bugatti right next to this, my eyes would go to the GTR. They always, always have. And maybe that's just the poor in me talking, but oh, it is just, it's amazing. I think just stunning and I love it and I'm so you know excited to to have one so that's it if you want more of it let me know down below again I don't unless just you guys are begging for more GTR content I don't think this will show up too much on the channel but it may show up more on Instagram just because it's a it's such a cool car and I really do like taking photos of cars, especially as I take this out on trips and just weekend drives and stuff to beautiful locations. Like I probably will document some of that, but more so in, in photos on Instagram. And Instagram's pretty, pretty stupid, worthless uh, social media platform overall, kind of a big waste of time, honestly. So really I just use it for for photos for the most part. Occasionally I'll make a reel, but reels are dumb too. So if you do wanna see more, Check it out on Instagram, last line of defense there. And probably, honestly, uh, the next video, all, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's the next video, but a soon video, I'm going to do a one-year update of the Sequoia. This has just been, this has been a fantastic car. It's got junk. It's been a great uh, construction vehicle. Throw stuff in here. Tons of room to fit stuff in the back. Got the car seat, the, the little camera hookup. Kind of the family hauler beater. It's got Toyo AT3s on it. So this is the, the, the vehicle. And it's kind of uh, technically four-wheel drive, but it has a, a locking or unlockable center diff. So it kind of is an all-wheel drive vehicle. So this is my best vehicle that I own in the snow outside of probably Ashley's RAV. Anyway, man. Beautiful. Just noticed my car just, just, just got pooped on. A little bird poop right on there. Look at that. Uh, Tacoma, it's pretty good. This is the same original wrap that I've had on it for the last, I don't know, four years. You can tell, you know, you get it at the right angle and it's just a bunch of pinstripes, but Still looking surprisingly good overall. Okay, that's all. Getting into too many, too much rambling. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Stupid, sweet. Is it your dream car? What's your what's your dream car? Are you a guy that likes trucks but also likes cars? Are you a are you a car guy through and through? I don't know. Always interesting to see what the what you guys, the viewers and commenters, are into or like or appreciate or yeah. Whatever, love hearing from you. So leave that down below and whew, 
Until next time, guys, take care.